We will be celebrating the feast day of St. Elizabeth of Hungary on November 17th. In time for this occasion, let us look back at the story of this remarkable woman. Elizabeth was the daughter of King Andrew II and Gertrude of Marinia. Her ancestry included many European nobles, including Vladimir the Great of Kiev in Russia. It is commonly believed that Elizabeth was born in Hungary, possibly in the Sorospatak Castle on July 7, 1207. The daughter of the king, Elizabeth chose a life of penance and asceticism, when a life of leisure and luxury could easily have been hers. While she was still very young, Elizabeth's father arranged for her to be married to a German nobleman. At age four, she was separated from her parents and sent to Thuringia for education and eventually marriage. Elizabeth learned about God and the religion while staying in Thuringia. There was a conflict among the German and Hungarian noblemen during this period. During one such conflict, Elizabeth's mother was murdered in front of her own eyes. Elizabeth was just six years old at that time. From this point on, Elizabeth's perspective on life and death dramatically changed, and she sought peace with prayer. Elizabeth was formally married to Ludwig when she turned 14. She found happiness again in her married life. The couple loved each other very much, and they had three beautiful children. Elizabeth learned all about the teachings of St. Francis of Assisi through Franciscan friars that arrived in Thuringia. After hearing all about what St. Francis stood for, Elizabeth sought to emulate his example. Seeking to become one with the poor, she wore simple clothing. Daily, she would take bread to hundreds of the poorest in the land. One of her greatest known miracles, the miracle of roses, occurred during this time. It is said that Ludwig and a few other relatives met her during one of her trips to deliver bread to the needy. One of the relatives saw that she was hiding something under her cloak, and he assumed that Elizabeth was stealing from the palace. Ludwig, in order to remove their suspicion, asked her to reveal what was under her cloak. Elizabeth removed her cloak, and this revealed a vision of red and white roses. Ludwig was quite stunned to see this vision. This incident proved to Ludwig that God was at work in the life of his wife. Ludwig, who was now one of the rulers of Thuringia, supported all of Elizabeth's religious endeavors, even though she was a part of the royal court. She used her royal position to advance her mission for charity. But Ludwig's mother, Sophia, his brother, and other members of the court resented Elizabeth's generosity. She was taunted and mocked by the royal family, but deeply loved by the common people. Once, it so happened that Thuringia was flooded and plagued with disease when Ludwig was not in town. To take care of those who were both sick and destitute, she had a small hospital built below the Wartburg Castle. Elizabeth took charge of caring for the afflicted, even when this required giving up the royal family's own clothes and goods. Another miraculous event in Elizabeth's life took place during this time, when she cared for a leper named Helias of Eisenach. As the hospital beds were running short, Elizabeth laid the afflicted upon the very bed that she shared with her husband. Her mother-in-law was horrified and told Ludwig about this when he returned home. He was annoyed and rushed to the bedroom to see for himself. Ludwig removed the bedclothes and instantly the Almighty God opened the eyes of his soul. And instead of a leper, he saw the figure of Christ crucified stretched upon the bed. The next year, however, would put Elizabeth's faith to the test. 
Her husband had promised to assist the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II in the Sixth Crusade, but he died of illness en route to Jerusalem. Devastated by Ludwig's death, Elizabeth vowed never to remarry. Her in-laws seized this opportunity to accuse her of mismanaging the finances of the kingdom, forcing her and her children out of the palace. For a while, they found refuge only in barns. In a few days, her husband's friends returned from the Crusades, and they were shocked to see her conditions. They helped restore her to her rightful place in the palace. But Elizabeth had so learned to love poverty and seclusion that she had no desire for worldly greatness. Elizabeth used her remaining money to build another hospital, where she personally attended to the sick almost constantly. Sending away her servants, she joined the Third Order of St. Francis, seeking to emulate the example of its founder as closely as her responsibilities would allow. Indeed, she was the first member in Germany and received a message from St. Francis himself. Near the end of her life, she lived in a small hut and spun her own clothes. Our Lord announced to her that he would soon call her to heaven. She told her father confessor, who had fallen seriously ill, that he would recover, but that she would die soon. Within four days, she became ill and was prepared for her final hour by her confessor, who had recovered. She passed away at the age of 24 on November 17, 1231, in Marburg, Hesse. The miracles that took place at her tomb were so numerous that Pope Gregory IX canonized her already in 1235. Saint Elizabeth of Hungary is the special patroness of the Sisters of the Third Order Secular of St. Francis, and also of some religious sisterhoods of the Third Order Regular. Almighty God, by whose grace your servant Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and honored Jesus in the poor of this world, grant that we, following her example, may with love and gladness serve those in any need or trouble. In the name, and for the sake of and through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.